the lovely Miranda sees me almost daily now. I can tell she's worried. I think she feels I'm unstable. <laughs> if only she knew the beast inside of me. I've never felt so focused on anything. I am determined now more than ever. However, her frequent visits really make my killing methods quite difficult. I'm literally stalking prey and planning important kills around my love life. Well, born an excellent problem solver, but this is the one thing I've yet to conquer. Becoming more and more difficult now to come up with reasons I can't see her. It feels wrong to do this, but I must do something. She has to go, even if it means hurting this poor soul. Okay now, settle down. I don't mean I'm going to kill her. It just means I may have to come up with some incredibly ridiculous lie. An evil, malicious plot. God, what the hell could I possibly say to her that would make her not ever want to speak to me again? <sighs> say that I'm married? <laughs> Maybe I'm a leader of a local neo-Nazi group. <laughs> nah, no, that's stupid. She would never believe me. Just then, a thought hits me like an anvil falling on Roadrunner from a cliff. I eat dead people. Yeah, that's what I'll tell her. If that doesn't make this sweet innocent girl run for the hills, I don't know what will. Several days pass as I completely ignore Miranda. I swear, if I wasn't a killer, I'd keep her as my trophy wife. Oof, an amazing woman. She finally comes over, demanding an explanation, banging on the door. The usual, very kind girl is now in a fit of rage. Hey, open the door, asshole. The banging continues. Let me in now, she screams. I wait a few moments, then invite her in, calmly. She walks in and sits on the couch, clearly distraught. I begin to tell her my horrible secret. She gasps, grabbing her hands quickly, covering her mouth, trying not to vomit, running to the door and slamming it shut hard, her footsteps slamming down on each step as she flees my apartment complex. Well, that's about the reaction I expected and was hoping for. I begin cheering, jumping up and down. And then, horrified, as I begin to realize just how happy it made me to be truly alone. Well, now that this smoking hot girl is out of my life, I suppose it's time to get back to what I do best. Stalking and killing. Turning my focus once more to the evil monsters who took Jordan's life. I call the captain to get the okay. Hey kid, how are you holding up? He says while smoking a cigar. Better, thanks. Listen, how are we on the Cortez case? Where's the FBI's investigation heading? Any leads as to who their primary suspect is? I ask intensively. He begins laughing. <laughs> oh, that... I had a few of my boys plant some evidence. They left a week ago, closing the case. Locked up a few low-level guys, he says. Hell yes. Don't worry, Cap. I'm going to put this coward away permanently, I cheeringly say. Oh, hell no you won't. Not without me. I set this one up. We'll kill this guy together, he exclaims. Captain comes over, bringing with him two plain-clothed officers I've never seen before. Come on in, guys. We've got some work to do. I greet them, showing them the way. My laptop is pulled up with all the info on Cortez and his ruthless crimes. The two men begin going through all the photos. I can tell they're quickly becoming interested each man becoming more and more frustrated with every moment. Disgusted, one of them closes the laptop. Okay, we're sold. When are we doing this? 
the men ask convincingly. Right, we strike them tonight. From watching them over the last few months, Captain says there's anywhere between two and five men that come and go from the house. The men, grabbing their baseball bats, placing them down on the table. What kind of job is this, exactly? One officer asks. I look at him with a smile. Well, an execution. You can keep the Louisville slugger. Come with me, I urge. Walking everyone to my gun safe, opening the door. There. Take your pick, gentlemen. Keep your service pistols at my home. Can't afford anything being traced back to us. Inspecting each weapon, one officer speaks with an Eastern European accent. I'll take this one, he says with a smile, grabbing the 12-gauge Mossberg 550 pump-action shotgun. Excellent choice, but I want the modified AR-15, says the captain. The third man grabs the remaining 9mm. The two officers holding the weapons, now sitting back on the couch, removing the magazines and rounds. I look at them as they disassemble each gun. The European man says, We must clean. Nodding in agreement, I smile, pulling the captain aside. Hey, are these guys trustworthy? I ask, slightly off-put. Oh, hell yeah. Two of my best men. Served with me for years now. The big one saved my ass a few times, he says, reassuringly patting me on the back. Nightfall comes, as everyone is ready. Sitting outside the house of this murderous gangbanger Cortez. The men, examining their guns, putting on their black leather gloves. The large man gets out of the car. We all follow. He kicks the front door in, as there's loud music being played throughout the home. Two men are in the living room, smoking pot. We all fire at will slaying them. One man tried to jump out from a nearby bathroom. He also was subsequently shot down, walking over to each man, quickly fading from this earth. The captain says, No, not him. Move on. I'm first in line. We clear the first floor of the house. Strategically holding my gun with my body placed against the wall, moving my arm around the corner, veering ahead. Slowly peeking out, I move my head. Shots ring out in our direction, drywall flying through the air. The men fire behind me, taking out the grunt. His body, limp, falls down the stairs, completely lit up and bullet-ridden. I double-tap this low-life scum. Hearing yelling coming from upstairs. Faintly, a voice cries out. Hey, who the hell are you vassals? We make our way up the stairs slowly, with the guns raised. The last man in the house comes out of a bedroom, wielding two Uzi 9mm, running down the hall. Gun blasts light up the entire house as each weapon's muzzle flash fire on this dark, moving object. As the man falls, his body reacts as several rounds pour into the drywall. Falling to the floor, blood is pouring everywhere. Cortez is choking and coughing on blood, trying to use any strength he has left. Attempting to raise his gun, both of the men and the captain all fire simultaneously. Me yelling, this is for Jordan, firing recklessly unloading my weapon completely. I feel the captain grab my arm sternly. Let's go. We've already been here too long, and this is a rough neighborhood. With rapid movements, each of us run down the stairs, reaching the now broken front door. Advancing through the front yard now, outside, a loud explosion bursts out. Car parts flying everywhere and flames rising ears ringing, not hearing sound. In a daze, we realize my SUV has just been blown to hell. 
all of us now on edge, weapons raised, frantically looking around. Seeing no one, we make a run for it. Passing through several neighborhoods, we're out of breath. Jeez, did someone follow us here? What the hell was that? We each begin asking questions to the others accusingly, pointing fingers to one another. We've been compromised, boys. Let's get the hell out of here, the captain explains. We travel on foot for a few miles until we feel safe, setting up a lift driver to pick us up. The captain and other men dispose of their large firearms, taking them apart and placing each piece into different trash cans and dumpsters. A few minutes pass as our driver arrives and takes us back to my place. The two men leave with only the captain and myself still at home. Kid, there's something I have to tell you. One of the guys I framed is the son of a federal judge who's been taking kickbacks and bribes, preventing the sentencing of gangbaggers to prison. His son, who I arrested, got life. I testified a few days ago at the court hearing. I have reason to believe he may be after me. He's protected by some really bad guys. Looking at him for a moment, thinking about everything he just told me. Well, looks like you owe me a new car then, you old bastard. Shocked, he peers in my direction and nods. Okay, I'll check the impound lot, see what I can find for you. Want anything in particular? He asks. Yeah, something fast as hell, I say, smiling. Well, you're in luck. I actually busted a couple of illegal street races a while back. If I remember correctly, one of them had a 3000 GT with a VR4 twin turbo. Will that work? I smile with excitement. Hell yeah, I'll take that. I begin cheering. All right. Talk to you tomorrow, kid. Be safe. The captain leaves as I begin considering the new risks and dangers that I now face. Hmm. A federal judge who keeps violent criminals out of prison? You are next. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>